Okay, uh, where are we now? Workbook. Uh, Math part two, engineering. Oh well, I thought it'd just be me and Mu Sharif again. No longer. No longer. I have it anymore. All right, come on. I'm glad you made it because this lesson is important for your coursework. Did you check the coursework? Oh, I did actually. I have it in the teacher's room. I can give it to you later this week if you like. You mean coursework one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not my coursework one last semester. Actually, I misspoke. It's not this lesson which is important for your coursework, but the... Wait, we did that. Wait this one we did. This one is not important for your coursework. I think it's the lesson in the next class. Oh, no, it's not either. It's, too, it's in this lesson. Okay. Oh well, I thought it was today's lesson for your coursework. No problem. O D E's is what we're having a look at. So what does ODE stand for? So the O is for ordinary, the D for differential, as in like derivative, and the E, one ever guess? Yes. <laughs> you only had really two things you could choose. So in other words, these are equations with dy dx, and your job is to find y. Got that? Yeah. So, hmm? Or, what's the other way? Opposite. So let's have a look at an example. Very simple example. Here's our first ODE. dy dx equals 2x. So if dy dx is 2x, uh, what's y? x squared. Anything else? Could it be anything else? Could it be x squared plus 1? Yeah. So the answer is x squared plus c. This is called the general solution because we don't actually know what the C is. Yeah. Um, of course they're not all easy like this. This is just a basic example to show you what an ODE looks like. So this is an ODE. It's an equation that has the derivative in it and you're looking for y, like I did there. Yes? Get the basic idea? Yeah. yeah. So let's have a look at some examples to show the different ways we can solve it. Can I scroll down? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do a simple one first. Let's do number one. So dy dx equals 
1 plus x plus x squared. How could I find y here? What could I do? X. Yeah, what could I do? How can I get the y here? Yeah, what's this cost? What? To camel. Division of the equation. Sure, not in Arabic, yeah. To camel, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, we integrate. So, dy dx integrate. 1 plus x plus x squared integrate. What will this become when you integrate? Uh, y. y. And this will become x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 plus c. Okay, that's a basic example. If you can write that down, we'll look at a more difficult one. And I should note you can't find c unless they give you, yeah, an x, y point. Other room. Got that? Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Let's look at an example where we do have the point. Let's do number three. dy dx minus x squared equals zero and the point we're given is when x is zero y is three in other words zero three is the point all right what should i do first here um, <laughs> the torch camel um, yeah. yeah move this to the other side so you get dy dx equals x squared then we integrate And now we get y equals x cubed over 3 plus c. Now I can find the, po uh, the c by putting in the point. Just like in semester 1, lesson 1. We get 3 equals 0 over 3 plus c. So that means c equals 3. So now I have my answer. And this is the answer here. Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's start making them more difficult. You can write this one down. Mm. Why is it? From here. Mm hmm. What number is this? No? Yes? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So I look minus the Here? Yeah. yeah, you really should write the X. You mean this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You should. Okay, you have this. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's have a look here. 
Um, next one. Right, so let's start making things um, a bit harder. Let's have a look at uh, number six, for example. x dy dx plus dy dx equals 1 and we're told uh, 1 0 is a point. So this is our first example where we have to use a technique called separation of variables. Separation of variables. So you can probably guess what it means. It means to separate the x from the y. Which makes sense. So the first thing you notice is that this is in common, so we can take that out. Okay. The problem is on this side we have x and y, which we don't like. So this side we make the y, and the other side will make the x by bringing the dx up to the right. So we have dy x plus 1 equals dx. We still have a problem because this should be with the x, so we'll bring that down, and then we get dy equals 1 over 1 plus x dx. And it's a bit like there's a 1 here. Now we can integrate y's and x's. So, I know, we didn't need to. We need this method. The difference is, if you look, this one was easy to separate. Here this was already separated. Now we have to separate. But why I can say dy over dx equal 1 over x plus 1? You can. Yeah, you can if you want. So if you wanted to, you could say dy dx equals 1 over x plus 1. That's fine, that's fine. And then yeah. integrate. But for some questions, it doesn't work to do this. I'll do one of those in a moment. It's better to write it like this. So, integrating, what does 1 become? X. Y, actually, because this is the Y side. And this one here becomes log 1 plus X plus C. Let's put in our point. 0 equals log 2 plus c, so c equals minus log 2. So I get y equals log 1 plus x minus log 2. And when I divide with logs, do you remember what happens? Sorry, when I minus with logs, it divides. So this is y equals log 1 plus x over 2 is the answer at the end. Okay, so we'll do another example like this. This is our first example using the separation of variables method. You're all studying engineering next year, aren't you? Yeah. Mystery mechanical mechanical engineering? Either mechanical or maybe electronic. Yeah, electrical electronic. And yours electronic. This lesson is extremely important for engineering. In fact, next year or maybe in year two you'll have one subject which is only about this topic. So it's important enough that it gets its own slot on the timetable.
Second rule of logs, log A minus log B is log A over B. This you did in semester one. A long time ago. Log A minus log B. Oh, no, no, don't act like this the first time you heard it. Log A over B. No, you make teacher worry when you act like this. At least I hope this now. I should be grateful for this. No, I should be <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, these came from the lesson on rules of logs, um, around about the middle of the first semester. If you want to have a look at the video, rules of logs is what you should search on my channel. Okay. Can we look at another example? A little bit harder than this. Um, let me see. Hmm. <laughs> Not too hard, maybe, but oh, that is. Maybe like number 10. dy dx minus xy equals 0. And again, the point is 0, 1. Alright, so first thing I should do is bring the xy to the other side. Now, on the left is the y side, and on the right will be the x side because I can bring this up to the right. So now I have dy equals xy dx. But there's a problem. What's the problem here? xy equals Yeah, we don't really want this one here. It's on the wrong side, isn't it? So we'll bring it down. We got 1 over y dy equals dx. Now we're good to... Oh, sorry. X. Now we're good to integrate. So let's integrate, integrate, integrate. And this is the reason why Mushrif, uh, I don't use the dy dx like you said last time because I need to have only y's here to integrate because if I had a dy dx I can't, I can't integrate this. It needs to be like this. No mixing. So what will this become? Mm -hmm. And this one? x squared over 2 plus c. Now, we'll take our point and put it in. So we get log 1 equals 0 plus c. Uh, what's log 1? You remember? Yeah, yeah. 0. 0. So c is 0. So we get log y equals a half x squared. That's not finished. Why not? Log 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 yes, again. That's it. I want y, not log y. So, how do I cancel a log? With an e. So I finish off with y equals e power a half x squared because I can put an e on both sides to cancel the log. Okay, this now is more like what you get in the exam. like that if you want dy over y. Okay, why did you choose to write about this? Personal preference. There's no special reason. Um, I just, the reason, well, okay, the reason is I like to think of this as a bracket around the dy. So it's like saying what's inside here you integrate. So I kind of like to have them pulled out so it's like these. It's pointing in, integrate this, you know.
you have this with you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's have a look at one more and then I'll let you try some. Um, 14 here. Two second derivative um, minus first derivative minus y equals zero. Now, this equation here, it is too difficult for us to solve in this course, although it won't be too difficult for you next year. But for this course, we don't need to solve it. What will happen in the exam is that they will give you the solution and you just need to verify the solution is correct. So how can we do that? Does anybody have any ideas on how I might prove that this is a solution to this equation? Equal to Not quite equal, it's something else. Sub in is what I was thinking. So if you can substitute y into this equation and show that you'll get zero. Now, this is fine, but what about dy dx? Well, we'll have to work it out. If y equals ex, well, this one's easy. What's dy dx? Derivative? Yes. Ex, yeah. And then you'll also need to substitute here. What's the derivative again? Yes. Yeah. Just dx again, yeah. So, let's substitute it in and see if we get 0. 2 ex minus ex minus ex. That equals 2ex minus 2ex, which equals 0. So therefore, y equals ex is a solution to the ODE. Okay, a little bit of vocabulary. So these equations are called ODEs, but we actually have two types we were looking at today. We have first order <coughs> ODE and we were also looking at second order ODE. If you were to guess, what do you think the difference is between the two? What's the difference between a first order and a second order? And we did both today. Yeah, the differentiation part. yeah how exactly? Yes, go on. That's it, yeah. So this type we call a second order because it has the second derivative in it, whereas something like this we call it a first order. And you might be wondering why are these so important in physics? or engineering and it's you know it's because over 90% of physics problems are first or second order of the DEs. So a lot of problems in physics can be solved by solving a ODE. Um, and you might also, so we've explained what the, well you know what the E is, equation, you know this word, and you know what the D is, differential, so what is the O representing? Well there is another type called 
PDE, which is, uh, anyone want to guess what the P might stand for? I'll be impressed if you get it. You have ordinary and problematic, no, but I like it, uh, partial. So the difference is with ODEs, the O meaning ordinary is just a Y and an X in it. Uh, but partial is a bit complicated for me to explain, so the simplest way I'll say it is typically it has uh, more than just X and Y in it. Now, not always, it's more to it than that, but for me, I'll just say for today, it's, you can think about it as just being more than just a simple dy dx. Yeah, well, actually, we'll say it like this ODE has dy dx in it, whereas partial differential equations have more than <coughs> dy dx, which makes these ones extremely difficult to solve. Maybe you'll do this in year three. Can you show us one? Like an easy one? No, but you'd be surprised that they look very similar to these. It's just how to solve them is very difficult. So it'd be something like, uh, uh, here's one. Um, so this is a tree variable one. something like that. This is actually an example of the wave equation. And we need to put the variable from one of the other. No. <laughs> no, you can't because you only have two sides, yeah. but you have three variables, x, y, z. So you can't exactly put one on each side. So they become quite difficult to solve. And in fact, some of them are unsolvable you can only find approximate answers. But just like with the ODEs, again, they represent important problems in physics. So this one is called the wave equation because it describes how waves move in space. Ocean waves, electromagnetic waves, heat, all this. Yeah. So you can look it up if you want to. They're called PDEs, but I mean, I have a big book at home from college, you know, like 500 pages, and the title of the book is this. So it's just 500 pages of solving problems like this. So I'm not joking when I say you'll have one subject where you just look at these because they're so important. So I remember in second year, I had three hours a week of ODEs, and in third year, I had three hours a week of PDEs. <coughs> and they would still come up in other subjects as well, not just the, these subjects too. So maybe it's like four hours a week of this. So anyways, my point is, for engineering, you'll all mm -hmm. definitely see these again, for sure. Yeah, And I really think you'll probably have one hour, or two hours, or three hours a week where you're only doing these. Because there's so, so many ways to solve these, and there's so many different types of problems with these. Okay. Um, but for you, for the IFY, you really just are looking at solving first order ODEs. Um, so I did a good few of them. How many did I do? Half of them nearly? One, two, three, four, five. I did five of them, okay. There's 16. So just so you know, for the exam, Kind of the good news is you can get both easy questions like number one and more difficult questions and questions like this as well. So everything you can get on the exam. Um, and both A and B. So something like number one could be an A. Uh, these are usually in B. They could be an A. I've seen number nine in A. So they could be an A or B. There's not really one way or another. Um, number nine is a good one. I think I'll let you try these for a few minutes. 
They're really, really important. I know I said that a lot, but I'm not joking when I say they're really important. Um, you're all engineering, so you'll see it again. Okay. I'll just pause the video.